गुड इवनिंग प्रिया लेट्स बिगिन विद अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन I am Priya Sharma. Right now, I am working as assistant professor of soft skills and technical communication at IET Lucknow, AKTU. Earlier, I was serving at the same post at KNIT Sultanpur. I have done my post graduation from University of Lucknow, and by the grace of God, I was gold medalist over there. I have cleared my JRF in English Literature in 2020, and I have done my graduation that is honors in english from lucknow university and there too with the grace of god i was gold medalist this is all about my education thing i am interested in theater i am an orator and i practice the hatha yoga meditation thank you very good so what is epic theater sir epic theater is a thing which originated in modern time or we can say post modern time where we try to like where the writer or the <clears throat> playwright wants to bring in the effect of alienation where the audience is made to feel that you are looking at a thing you do not have to just watch it and get a catharsis and forget it in the theater hall no you have to see it you have to feel it so that you can bring a change in the society sir if i am not not wrong then it started in germany and other name for alienation effect is verb from drunk why the word epic sir epic theater um because it 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 involves a large scale of uh, uh, presentations like in epic we we use a uh, a uh, great presentation like grand presentation so it also makes looks like on a grand way so maybe maybe that okay tripathi sir this is a get guess work tripathi sir sir you are mute sir you are not audible what is istikomithia in theater sorry sir Is istikomithia Sorry, sir. I don't know this. I don't What know. is the basic difference between a dramatic monologue and interior monologue? Okay, okay, sir. I will try to give the answer that in a dramatic monologue, it is made to feel that to the reader that there is a listener present. Like in the case of my last Duchess, the Duke is telling. to the uh, to a person who is listening to him and interior monologue there is you know reader writer is talking to speaker is talking to his own self this is the difference i can crave on for example sir for interior monologue i can say j alfred prufrock the love song of j alfred prufrock he is saying to his own self he is not saying it to for the readers or something but in my last touches the duke is saying to the person who is sitting right next to him and he is showing him different different things the painting of venus and all these things that is all i can think you just use it also an interior monologue sorry sir sorry Tintern Abbey by Wordsworth is also an interior monologue, and his sister Dorothy is present with him. Yes, sir. How? Okay, sir. Uh, as for Wordsworth, we can say that he said that poetry is recollection in uh, of strong emotions in tranquility. so when he recollected it maybe then he you know talked to himself he explained those lines to him his own self and then he written it down maybe in that way i'm not very sure about it wordsworth never followed his theory of poetry okay he gave the theory and he quit the theory yes, he wrote yes, something yes. else and uh, colrez differs on this point only what is wordsworth poetic theory Sir, emotions recollected in tranquility, where he says that when you 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 feel something when you see that moment, and after some time when you are sitting at ease, you rethink about that and you write it down. This is what what theory that that I is that is not a spontaneous overflow. That is the meditative poetry. Then what is the difference between 18th century poetry and the romantic poetry? 
and as you know that romanticism was a revolt against 18th century prose against 18th century poetry okay 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 so <coughs> Okay, Priya. Uh, yes. What is neo-colonialism? Sir, neo-colonialism, as we know that we are living in a post-colonial world. That now, on uh, imperialistic thing, there is no colony left. But the thinking process of the Commonwealth people or all the people who were once colonized. is influenced by the policies of first world uh, people or first world policies so the, the the mental level on which we are still thinking and trying to copy the uh, first world people is called neo colonialism in my view uh, <clears throat> has it some link with the um, economic or uh, you can say foreign policy that is uh, uh, that is being launched at present Yes sir. yes, sir. In economic policy, also like they are running food chains and they are running clothes chains, and if we are not, you know, fulfilling to those standards, they we in our own self consider that we are not, you know, to the mark. This is also a sign of colonialism of our mind. nowadays like in our culture what thing seems to be that on any of the festivals the togetherness was important thing but now what is, shopping has okay sorry. okay that's i got what is a what is a culture the culture uh, is a uh, all everything that is passed on from one generation to other generation it is man made by man and it gives a better direction to the uh, next generation okay how do the uh, how do the cultural materialist describe culture the cultural materialist describe culture in a way when material possessions like for example base and superstructure and where then what happens is ki the laborers and they form the base and the superstructure the culture the language all these things are formed by base but it governs the base so matlab uh, i can say that uh, um, for sir i am not able to describe it in best way if but i say if i say culture is a culture is a industry is an industry how do you you know support that argument if i say that culture is an industry sir culture in an industry and whatever culture uh you know commands us to do we follow it it may be for our good it may not be for our good also but we follow it why because it has been said in culture and it, and we all are directed by that like sir example for example i would like to uh, put uh, strengthen my argument by the example of louis althusser where he says that ideology right it is a ideological state apparatus and through the process of interpolation we think that it is our thoughts and our ideas who are governing us but no it's not our it is all governed by the society so uh, this is all i can say sir okay sorry sir you are on mute Dr. Jain Major, sir, you are on mute. Yes. It is all governed by the market. We are not independent. Actually, we don't have any choice. But it is shown that you have choice. For example, if you uh, want to buy a jacket and go to the market, uh, the jacket that you uh, uh, that you want to buy, there are only two pieces. There are only four pieces, and you have to pick one of them, right? And it's uh, the market shows that you have choice. but in fact you don't have choice there are only four and you have to pick one okay that is interpolation okay all right uh, priya let let me ask you one last question and then we'll have a very quick feedback so um, there's a book named interpretation of dreams and yes, uh, that talks about the um, dreams right and uh, methods of formation of dreams and it talks about two particular methods one is condensation the other is replacement right so can you please explain condensation and replacement 
Yes, sir. That I have read. Uh, this is by Carl Jung. Uh, sorry, Sigmund Freud, and it is his theory of dream and how they affect us and how they are formed. Sir, in that, uh, uh, sir, I am unable to recall it. That uh, it right now, but I have it in my mind. Like, uh, like if you have, uh, like for for example, for replacement, if we say that. If we have a fear of something, so if I am scared of snake, so in my dream, um, sir, I am unable to give correct example. Okay, right. You are on the right track. You are on the right track. Uh, please just uh, revise it before you come for the next interview. Right. So let's very quickly have the feedback from my side, uh, Priya. You are uh, confident and. Uh, uh do one thing that don't use hindi words like matlab etc in in, in your okay. speech use it use completely you uh, be in english only right and uh, try to be a bit more positive uh, in non verbal gestures like keep a bit su- some smile on your face you are appearing appearing too okay. serious right okay. Uh, okay other than that your answers are very good your um, your, your arguments are quite good of course there are some mistakes that you need to correct right uh, we have not asked much from literature we will try to see what happens in the next one that is my feedback tripathi uh, sir and mr sir priyanka when you are in an interview as a interview is a part of your uh, syllabus that you teach uh, the students right uh, when you are an interview try to be very precise okay Right, speak as uh, as little as possible. Uh, this is not a class. You have to give a very correct and exact answer. That's all. Uh, don't elaborate. Otherwise, you will entangle yourself. Okay. You are throwing a lot of questions. Okay. Okay. In your answers, so try to be very precise. You speak very less, and be confident. Okay. Right. And uh, your face. Should be a book. Okay. 